This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Tuesday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news that the US dollar has fallen to a seven month low as American disinflation extends in their economy and that is raising expectations of rate cuts in each of the Fed's remaining three reviews this year. U.S. equity markets are rising on the same expectation, with the S&P 500 moving back to again challenge its mid-July all-time high. They seem to be voting with their money that the U.S. Fed has in fact engineered a soft landing, or better, and that the trajectory from here is up on the back of an aggressive easing cycle from the Fed. However, the U.S. Conference Board's leading indicators slipped a bit more than expected in July, but they also said the six-month trend no longer indicates a recession ahead. Meanwhile, the Atlanta Fed's GDP Now tracker sees good 2% growth in the third quarter of 2024 for the U.S. economy, better than the blue-chip analysts that they benchmark against. And Japan said core machinery orders, which exclude those for ships and electric power companies, rose by 2.1% in June from May, better than expected. It was on the back of an upturn in orders from the service sector, they said. In Japanese yen, these orders were up 2.6% from the same month a year ago. And later today, China will release its latest review of its loan prime rates, but no changes are expected. These rates are already at all-time lows. And the lacklustre Chinese economy has sharp consequences for Australia. Australia shipped $138 billion worth of iron ore in the year to June. A Canberra report projects that to fall to $114 billion in the next 12 months and $102 billion in the following, as prices continue to fall. That could leave a $3 billion hole from royalties in the Australian federal results. The wider Australian economy will have downside risks from this too. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now just on 3.87% and down one basis point from yesterday. And the price of gold will start today down $6 from yesterday at $2,502 an ounce. And oil prices are down $2 at just on $73.50 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is now just on $77.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today up a half a cent from yesterday at 61 US cents against the Aussie we're a tad softer at 90.7 Australian cents, but against the euro we're up 20 basis points at 55.1 euro cents. That all means our trade weight index starts today at 69 and up 20 basis points from yesterday. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $59,252 and down a half a percent from yesterday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been modest at just on plus or minus 1.7%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes, and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow.